Well guys, welcome back to the nest. Hope you all keep well. Hope you all had a great Christmas and got what you oh and got what you wanted. Just wrap around my sheet of paper there. I'll explain to you what that is in a wee minute. Um well tomorrow night is officially the last night of the year. Um hope you've all had a good year so far, you know I'm sure there's been a, it's had its ups and downs, you know. I think this year has gone a lot better considering what we've been going through the last couple of years. Um but Tonight is also the last review of the year I'm going to do. Um, yes, tonight's review is the next James Bond film. <whistles> On Her Majesty's Secret Service from 1969. Yes, I will say there only this is only the the second movie I'm doing in 1969 because I told you I was I was only going to do two for this year. But anyway, um, I'm going to move this camera over a wee bit. Yeah, that's better. Um, Anyway, where were we? Yeah. Um, so, a wee bit of background to this movie. After playing James Bond in five movies over the last five years, Sean Connery fell trapped, so he did. And he decided that, I'm, re I'm just going to resign, because I actually feel like I'm stuck inside a goldfish bowl doing these movies five years in a row. And they decided to hire a man named George Lazenby. Now, this guy, I found out that he had no acting credits prior to filming this movie. And <laughs> he was he was a model. He was a model, and he was only in a few uh, adverts for Fry's Chocolate. <coughs> I didn't even know Fry's Chocolate was around at that time. Um, well, I guess there was a lot of stuff that was around with back whenever, way before I was born. Um, but yeah, they hired George Lazenby. Um, I was also surprised to hear that he was from Australia because I thought it was just the British actors they hired as James Bond. But yeah. Um, I will admit, despite having a new James Bond, I actually thought this was one of the best ones so far. I think it's just because of the amount of action in it. Um, it just, James Bond just takes everything to a great new length, you know, the sacrifices he's willing to make. Um, because even though it was in 1969, you know, there was a lot of action in this movie, you know, the fight sequences are brilliant. <clears throat> um, I like to see that Ernst Stavro Blofeld returns as the main antagonist in this movie, but I was surprised <coughs> we bit heckler, sorry guys. <coughs> I was surprised to see that um you know Donald Pleasanston reprised his role, maybe that he just didn't enjoy the fact that he didn't have enough screen time in that movie, but I was a bit gutted that James Bond had managed to kill him in the last movie and you only live twice. Yeah. Well, man, it's been a long since we've reviewed a James Bond movie, but I will say I really love this franchise so far. Like, it's the two leading franchises on this channel I've reviewed so far because we're still in the olden days, you know, with Disney, the Walt Disney animated canon series, and then James Bond. But yeah, um, I will say after the next James Bond movie, I will say I did hear that they're not basing it off the books by Ian Fleming anymore, that they're not... Like, they just decided to make their own original ideas for the next few movies. But yeah, James Bond is now played by played by George Lazenby, and he already breaks the fourth wall. This never happened to the last guy. <laughs> I wonder if um, no, actually Sean Connery has um, his Bond girls never stole his cars on a beach in the beginning. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I do realize that they tried to make they tried to reassure people that it was the same movie series, you know, by playing flashbacks of previous James Bond films, and, you know, whenever uh, Liz and Beast Bond is told by um, Q, I do like how they've kept the actors for Q and Miss Moneypenny, um, that since he wasn't able to capture Blofeld, since he's had two years, he, um, he's not sacked from his services as, as Agent 007, he's just sacked from the mission named Operation Bedlam and he's pretty sure that uh, another mission will turn up very soon for him but um, he decides to hand in a letter of resignation to um, Miss Moneypenny no to, no to Q but Miss Moneypenny decides to take, take it anyway and he looks through all the gadgets that were used in the previous movies like specifically the watch that had the, um, the grappling hook inside it that he used to strangle Grant in From Russia With Love Gotta say, I really enjoyed that movie. Um, but 
Q decides to uh, take on board the letter of resignation, well, when I say resignation, it's only uh, a notice for two weeks leave. And Bond decides to return the favour to Miss Mummy Penny by finally taking her out on a day, because I do realise there are many, many implications that Miss Mummy Penny has feelings for James Bond, but she's never, um, she's just never come through with it. And Bond is so busy with so many missions. I also realised that George Lazenby, he actually, um, looks like Sean Connery in a way. They've tried to make the new cast look like the old cast. <laughs> anyway, Bond manages to track down, um, Blofeld up to the Alps in Switzerland. Wait, wait, no, where are they? Where are the Alps? Are they France or Switzerland? I'm not too sure. I will say, Switzerland is beautiful. Beautiful. Um... And I don't really think he wants to be doing a mission during Christmas time, but it's what must be done, you know, it's his, um, it's his goal in life, you know, it's his job, he loves his job very much. But, um, Blofeld is located, and it turns out he's using these young, attractive women. Oh, I will say, <laughs> that's one of Bond's weaknesses. <laughs> even one of, uh, even Blofeld's henchwoman says, No, we, we all know what his allergy is, girls. He already manages to pick up a, um, the daughter of a crime lord, Contessa Teresa de, Vince de Vincenzo, I don't know, some Italian name, I think, but, um, we get to call her Tracy, you know, I do think that was, a uh, something I found out about, the woman who played, um, who played Tracy, and the woman who also played uh, Pussy Galore and Goldfinger, they were both in a, um, in a spy television series, and just whenever they were finished, they decided to take part in another sp spy entertainment series, James Bond. <laughs> but yeah, um, I do love how Tracy isn't very keen on um, being with James Bond, but unlike all the others, you know, he's never felt this way about a girl. Um, so it turns out that Blofeld manages to find out James Bond's identity because according to him, no visitors ever take part in sexual acts with the test subjects. <laughs> I wonder why they made him American. I can't remember. Did, it was, did Donald Pleasant use an English accent for the last movie? I can't really remember. But, um, you know, I will say that this movie was quite intense. You know, he's using these girls, as he calls them, the an his angels of death, to deliver bacteria and place them onto the, um, the worldwide livestock the livestock and the um sorry sorry girls it's my sister and my mum sorry that might have might gotten an interruption there I really don't like when people are calling out whenever I'm trying to do a video I keep trying to explain them but they'll just tell me it's their house they can shout and scream all they want anyway back to the movie um they're going to bring the, the bacteria over the, the livestock and the cereal all over the world. Basically, he's holding the word ransom. And and he's basically said, and it, the only reason he's doing this is because he wants to be pardoned for all of his past crimes. I'm sorry, but he's been, like, the one holding the strings to the puppets. Like, you know, with Rosa Klebb and Emilio Largo. You know, he's been number one all along, and he expects them to... Um, let him go for all the crimes he's committed. I mean, <laughs> he's getting on like a child pretty much. And that this is just another felony he's committing. <laughs> Holding the word ransom by putting bacteria into their food. All just so they'll um, let him go for all his past crimes. I don't think so. Well, I will say that um, I do love how Bond manages to escape by going down the um, going down the slopes. I will say I've been skiing a few times now. It is so much fun. Um... You always worry about falling over, but always remember to do the pizza and then french fry to slow yourself down. That's all you have to do. But with a group of assassins after you, um, with a group of assassins after you, it must be very hard to ski, especially whenever one of them shoots the poles off you, and then you, um, you have to, no, the, the ski off you, then you have to go down on one. But luckily, Bond manages to find a strategy. I love how he knocks one of the pursuers off the um, the cliff and then doink <laughs> whenever I was watching that I was like bye bye <laughs> um, 
I manages to get a spare ski. <laughs> and whenever he manages to uh, get on the safe ground again, he comes across Tracy. I don't know whether she was sent by her father to rescue him, because I do know that her father was the one who, like, who's in charge of all the, um, the marriage and everything. But they managed to get caught up in a race. Um, I wonder what kind of race that was, you know, it was just cars all, you know, you get dizzy by going in circles all day long, but they managed to come across a shack where, um, James Bond professes his love for Tracy, and he proposes to her because I just don't know what it is about her, maybe it's just because, you know, she's properly rescued him, you know, it's usually him who's having to rescue all the other Bond girls he's been associated with, but, um, in the end, he, um, he gets... Like, Bunt, I think that was her name, um, Blofeld's henchwoman, she manages to catch up to them and while they're on the slopes, I will say this is the only gory scene I've seen in a James Bond film so far, one of the pursuers is mashed up by one of those snow machines that clears snow out of the way. He had a lot of guts. <laughs> I do love how, you know, George Lazenby is still trying to retain some of the puns that um, Sean Connery made, you know, say whenever he wrapped up one of the henchmen, one of the minions of Blofeld, he says, you have been much better gift wrapped. <laughs> yeah, just imagine a new Christmas present you deliver, and it's uh, either a knocked out or a dead um, henchman, all wrapped up. <laughs> just imagine that on your Christmas tree. But anyway, um, what happened next? Oh yeah, Tracy gets kidnapped, and then it's back to Bond's old ways of having to rescue the um, having to rescue the girl he loves. Um, that's the thing about James Bond, he, he's just, all the women love him, because he's a handsome, talented, noble spy who will do anything for his country. <laughs> but, like I say, Tracy is the one that he, he has proper feelings for. But, he, regardless of whether or not he has to marry her, if you know what I mean. Um, and I just love the full-on assault on Blofeld's lair. And, you know, so much action, the theme song plays, and you just remember the Sean Connery that we all have. I'm sorry, but it's just, I'm so used to Sean Connery now that it's so weird seeing another actor take his place. And I have heard that the, every few years they do replace James Bond. And I think it's still the same James Bond. Like, they're not the same character. They're not trying to use different James Bond for, like, code names. Because I do know that the, I have found out that this series actually takes place in a floating timeline. You know, where the, where the characters don't age. But, you know, he does manage to um, rescue Tracy. And a final showdown with Blofeld ends up with him getting caught in a tree. <laughs> I must say you absolutely branched out. But, on the day of the wedding, I do say I felt sorry for Miss Moneypenny because she was so upset to see um, James Bond married. And she never really got to per confess her love for him. And Q actually regains respect for Bond as one of his, um, as his VIS, very important spy. No, MVP, his most valuable player, like his most valuable spy. And James Bond, he's, he's modest. Like, he, he, re he rejects the money that, um, like, millions of pounds that um, Q offers him. But, you know, he's modest. Because the money doesn't make him happy now that he's got a wife. But I will say I was very sad about the ending. Like, Blofeld has survived and he kills Tracy in a drive-by shooting. She'll be okay. We have all the time in the world. And I must say, it's very heartbreaking to see the Bond cry for the first time ever. Like, he's just found the woman that he loves very much. And only a day, only like being married for like half an hour. She's killed. She's taken away from him already. Like, God knows what, what's going to happen next. Like, he's probably never going to feel the same way about women again. He's probably going to turn to his um, alcohol a bit more often. You never know what, what can happen because he's lost someone he loves very much. And, you know, it's all taken from him in one day. I do hope in the next film, Blofeld gets killed. But let's just say, I do hope Blofeld finally gets his comeuppance. Like, he never really gets what he deserves. Like, like his plans are foiled, but he never properly gets stopped. And I will say, I don't mean to say this, guys, but in a movie, I kind of prefer if the villain gets killed, because 
it's what they deserve. Well, I know it's, it sounds immoral, but it's the only real comeuppance they can get, so they can never come back and like try to take the protagonists, um, everything they hold close to them, if you know what I mean. Um, it did give a a next, it did give a foreshadowing, it did set the stage for the next movie. It said James Bond will return in Diamonds Are Forever. Now, I don't know whenever I'm going to review that, but it will be very soon, guys. Um, I will check the, um, the route for the next movie anyway. The route for the next year. But, um, you know what I mean by route of the set list. But I will say, after, after this movie, I did find out that during filming, George Lazenby only, um, signed on to do one film. Like, he could have played him in, like, six or seven more movies and he could have earned millions of pounds but I guess he just didn't really enjoy being an actor like he you know he only wanted to be James Bond once and I did find out that some people like were surprised like I will say like despite having a new actor on the scene like I really enjoyed George Lazenby's performance in this movie but you know he actually admitted I'd rather be a Carl Salesman, salesman than find fame in all these movies. If you know what I mean, like look what happened to Sean Connery, he just got sick and tired of being the same character in the long span of five years, in five movies. And you know, he just felt trapped, and I don't think George Lazenby wanted to go down that route, but you know, at least he was modest with it, and he turned it down for future roles. But, let's just see what the next James Bond film has to offer. But I will say, that is the end of the 1969 era. Um, I really... It's been a... It was good. Like, it could, it could have been a bit better, but, you know, doing Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, you know, it was... I enjoyed that movie. You know, I enjoyed a lot of these movies, but I'm just getting sick of these older movies. But now that we're going into the 1970s, like... Um, hopefully things will be a wee bit better. But since we're at the end of 1969, I want to... Hope I'm okay doing this, but I want to read out a list of people who we lost in that year, like famous people. Um, Judy Garland, who played, as all you all remember, Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Probably her most famous role. I remember when we did The Wizard of Oz, you know, last year, you know, one of the best movies we've reviewed on this channel so far. Probably one of the most familiar, because I know you guys aren't really familiar with a lot of these movies. And then we've lost Boris Karloff, the guy who played Frankenstein. Um, I did hear that the, one of the last movies he did was um, narrating the animated, the traditionally animated Grinch short in 1966, I believe. That was Boris Karloff. And also, I'm not going to get into this death, but it was also Sharon Tate. And finally, Brian Jones, who was the multi-instrumentalist from the Rolling Stones. I will say, I do think he was like the first, like rock musician we lost but unfortunately not the last because you know that's just how life goes but yeah I repeat to those four people um thank you so much for watching guys I uh, hope you enjoyed 1969 I'm sorry that this one was so, so, so short and I will say in the next um the next year we're gonna do is also gonna be the same short it's got the equal amount of movies in this year you know only two movies I won't tell you what they are yet but Hopefully you'll enjoy them and you're familiar with them. Hopefully in the 1970s it's going to take off a wee bit more with this channel. Um, thank you for supporting this channel so far, guys. My resolution for the new year is this channel. And then I've got my course and my friends and my family who are my main priority in this year. Because, you know, this is all I've got pretty much, guys. Um, do keep supporting this channel. It means so much to me. I promise things are going to be a wee bit more better with this channel, you know. It's my main focus. I'm sorry I, for the whole year I took long period of breaks. But it's just because my DVDs all got locked up that I have prepared for this channel. And it just put me off a wee bit. And you know, I, I have to... I've, I've still got a good number that we're going to review. But hopefully in the new year I'll get them back. But thank you so much for watching, guys. We are now in 1970. So yeah, Happy New Year to you guys. I do hope that this year goes very, very well. You know, after a good few years of, you know torture you know I do hope things get better if you know what I mean you know it's been a tough couple of years but you know we've come back strong but thank you so much for watching you guys oh I forgot to say I really I loved how there wasn't really a theme song for this movie but halfway through you know Louis Armstrong sang a song for it 
Um, I thought Louis Armstrong was a brilliant singer. But I will say thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next year. I might put up a wee short to wish you all a happy new year on Sunday night so well because tomorrow is the last day of the year. But thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to tell your friends. Turn on the notification bell. And I shall see you guys in the new year with a new video. Um, and then I shall see you whenever I do the movies for 1970. Don't forget to tell your friends. Subscribe. Comment what you would like to see next, like, I shall see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for this year guys, I shall see you in the next one. Love you all to death.